Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the immaculate heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your sacred heart in union with the holy sacrifice of the mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins for the intentions of all my relatives and friends and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. Let us pray for the intentions of the Holy Father for the month of September, for people living on the margins. We pray for those persons living on the margins of society in inhumane life conditions. May they not be overlooked by institutions and never considered of lesser importance. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, as we enter in the presence of the Lord, as we have decided to spend this time with the Lord this morning, let us begin by thanking the Lord for all the good things, for all the blessings, all the graces that He has given us all through our life. But sometimes we see that because of our busy schedule or because of the activities that we are involved in, we sometimes fail to recognize all these graces that the Lord has given us. And therefore, today in a very special way, let us recognize those graces. Some of these blessings which may appear to be quite small, quite insignificant, nonetheless we see play a very significant role in our lives. And therefore, let us close our eyes at this moment and let us praise the Lord. Let us thank Him for the gift of this day. He has woken us up this morning. He has given us good health of mind and body. He has protected us all through the night. And for this, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we also thank you for the various gifts, the various talents that you have given us, talents which we may use for the benefit of others or which we may use to grow and become better individuals. Lord, we also thank you for the gift of people in our lives. We thank you for our family members, friends, relatives, near and dear ones, and all those who play a very important role in our lives. On many occasions, we have seen that it is because of the hard work, dedication of these individuals that we have developed and we have grown in our lives. And therefore, Lord, we thank you for these people, for these individuals who have dedicated their time and effort and have helped us become better individuals. We also thank you, Lord, 
for the opportunities that you have given us. We also thank you for the experiences. There have been good experiences which we would want to cherish and remember always. But there have always been also the experiences that have taught us many things. And therefore, Lord, we thank you for all these not so good, not so pleasant experiences because they too have helped us to grow in various ways. And Lord, we also thank you for all the good things and the blessings that you continue to shower on us at every moment of our lives. Lord, you have always kept us in your love. At every moment your gaze is upon us. You are there constantly guiding and protecting us. And therefore, Lord, for this we thank you, we praise you and we glorify you. And Lord, as we gather together in worship to offer this morning offering, we pray that this day may be a day of joy and blessings in your name. That whatever we do today, you may be there to guide us and protect us. And therefore, my dear friends, today we shall reflect and meditate on Psalm 54. And as usual, we shall have a general overview of the psalm and then we shall go into the details. Now, Psalm 54 is a prayer of lament that is written by David. And here he is asking for God's help and protection against his enemies. Now, the psalm is structured in three parts. First, we have an introductory plea for God's help, which can be found in verses 1 and 3. Then you have a description of David's enemies and his trust in God's protection, which we will find in verses 4 to 5. And then you have a final statement of praise and confidence in God's deliverance, which can be found in verses 6 to 7. And therefore, overall, looking at Psalm 54, we see that it expresses David's plea for God's help. And thus, David is also asking God to give him his protection against his enemies. And here we can also see the trust that David has in God's faithfulness and protection. Now, we see that David contrasts God's faithfulness with the deceitfulness of his enemies. And therefore, he takes refuge in God's name, knowing that he will be protected. And here we see that the psalm emphasizes the importance of turning to God in times of trouble, of having faith and trust in the Lord, and at the same time the hope and confidence that comes in trusting in God's deliverance. And therefore, verse 1 of the psalm begins with David's plea for God's help, asking God to save him by his name and vindicate him by his might. And here we see that David is in distress and he feels helpless against his enemies. And then we see that he turns to God for help. Now verse 2 describes David's enemies and how are they described? They are described as strangers and violent men who seek his life. Now, these enemies of David are not named, but they are likely to be associated with the time when David was fleeing from King Saul. And therefore, David notes that these enemies do not set God before them, meaning that they do not fear God or acknowledge his sovereignty. And therefore, this is a good message for us also when we are faced with difficulties, when we have difficult moments in our lives. We can always turn to God who is ever willing to protect us. Now verse 3 continues with David's plea for God's help. And here we see that David is asking God to hear his prayer and give ear to his word. David trusts in God's faithfulness 
and in his ability to answer prayers. And here we also see that David asked for God's mercy and grace in time of need. Verse 4 will then begin the second part of the psalm in which David describes his enemies and his trust in God's protection. David notes that God is his helper and that he has always been sustained by God's power. Now David will contrast God's faithfulness with the deceitfulness of his enemies. And here we see that David sees his enemies as those who seek to harm him even though he has done them nothing wrong. Sometimes we too may have the same feeling. We have done everything right but still there are people who persecute us, people who do evil against us. And in this time we can relate to David and see how he went about. Verse 5 continues with David's trust in God's protection noting that God will deal with his enemies and he will destroy them in faithfulness. David trusts in God's deliverance and takes refuge in his name knowing that God will protect him from his enemies. And therefore verse 6 now will begin the final section of the psalm in which David expresses his confidence in God's deliverance and therefore he gives thanks to God for his help. David notes that God has delivered him from every trouble and therefore he will look with satisfaction on his enemy's downfall. And verse 7 will conclude the psalm with a statement of praise and confidence in God's deliverance. David declares that he will freely offer sacrifices to God and he will give thanks to God for his name, knowing that God has delivered him from all his troubles. And therefore, my dear friends, as we reflect on Psalm 54, as we allow the psalm to sink in, to take root in us, let us now focus our attention on a particular thought or a particular verse that would have touched us. And let us remain with that verse, let us remain with that thought, allowing the Lord to guide us, allowing the Lord to show us what is the right path that he has chosen for us. And therefore, my dear friends, as we continue to reflect on this psalm, let us ask the Lord to be with us, guide us and show us the way. And we ask him that throughout today's day that he may be with us, helping us, guiding our steps, helping us to do his will and thus help him in building the kingdom of God. Amen. And now we shall spend a few moments in silence, reflecting on this, asking the Lord to guide us, to show us that he is there with us even in our moments of trials and difficulties. Prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of of the heavenly host by the power of God thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits 
who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls amen act of adoration o sacrament most holy o sacrament divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine Saint Gertrude pray for souls in purgatory Eternal Father I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine son Jesus in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory for sinners everywhere for sinners in the universal church those in my own home and within my family amen may the divine assistance remain always with us and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of god rest in peace amen glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen